My name is David Kim. I'm a mix engineer from Los Angeles, California. Yeah, we at Chalice right now. This is where, you know, I came up from intern to engineer. And uh, now I'm talking to you guys. I've worked on the last two Nas albums, King's Disease 1 and King's Disease 2, which just got nominated for a Grammy. I worked with the late great Nipsey Hussle, Kendrick Lamar, DJ Khaled, Hit Boy, just to name a few. If I had to put it in one sentence, like if there is no Nas, there is no David. The first time I worked with him was at Chalice and it was one of my earlier engineering gigs. This was the first time I was actually nervous to, to record somebody. Until then, I, 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 I understood that everybody is a person when they come in the studio, right? Your favorite artist, no matter how big they are, when they step into the studio, they're just people. But for some reason that day, you know, like my hands were shaking a little bit. My voice was shaking a little bit. You know, I told him though, I was like, hey, you're the reason I started listening to music, working on music. And he said, man, that's crazy, full circle. We are where we're supposed to be. And that like really resonated with me. And, and that made me feel like I'm supposed to be here. Working in music is really fickle because it plays with your emotions. You know, one month you have all these projects lined up and then the next month you're dry. We're human beings, so we go through that whole thought process of is it me, is it something I did wrong? Like you start listening to mixes and, and picking out things that you could have done better, thinking that you could have done better and, and that that's what would have called them back. And this was the first time where I felt like, okay, I'm supposed to be here and I've worked my ass off to get to this point and it's led me to meet my heroes and work with, you know, the person that started it all. There's one really memorable story that I have and, and that's working with um, Nipsey Hussle before he passed. I had the pleasure of mixing Racks in the Middle, which Hit Boy produced. It was incredible because I recorded the last end of, of that song and while I was in the studio, I did something that I've never done before, which was reach out to him and ask if I can um, personally mix the song. I felt like I had to mix it because I felt some kind of some kind of energy, you know. Nip, like he had this this energy that consumed the room. Every time he walked in, every word that he spoke, people listened. There's something about his demeanor and, and his respectfulness for for everybody in the room that like caught your attention. That recording session, I was like, man, if I don't reach out to him and if I don't ask him if I can get the first pass at this mix, then I'm gonna regret it for the rest of my life. We mixed it in Studio B at Chalice. The first pass he came in, he was like, oh, it's perfect. He had one note, which was like a DB up on his vocals, but he requested to lay it on the board. So we did like a hybrid mix and the rest is history, you know, like, Rest in peace, Nipsey Hussle. That kind of started a positive habit for me and like not being scared to reach out, you know, to A&Rs, to producers, to artists and, and see if they're willing to take a chance with me. Because more times than not, they are and, and they're just waiting for someone to, to come reach out to them. I think over the years, you know, I used to spend a lot of time like in the corner of this room while I was an assistant, you know. I've seen a lot of dope engineers in here. Um, Josh Goodwin, Fabian, you know, Leslie. And any chance I get, I would reach out and hey, like, how did you do that? Or what, what hotkey did you use? Even if I'm having a conversation with an artist or, uh, that's brand new or a producer, I'm taking down mixed notes, you know, like I'm seeing what they're doing. And even if it's, you know, technically wrong by the book, if I have an opportunity to use that, I'm gonna try it. Because every time you level up, you're expected to be this certain person you're, you're expected to deliver a certain sound your standard goes up so if you hit the standard you can never go backwards you can always aim higher but you know that's a lot of pressure and, and there's there's a couple times that like i just broke down in in my room just because because of the pressure on my back a lot of it is is self imposed though you gotta you gotta remember like as people put expectations on you, you double them expectations on yourself. I think it really helps to have peers in the industry. If you have this huge problem that you think that you're going through by yourself and somebody can relate to you, there's a crazy way that calms you down and, and brings everything down to earth so you can like really problem solve and, and get past it. I think the most important thing for me 
was organization. Cause once something's organized to my eyes, it gives me ample room to be creative. Once I know my hotkeys and once I don't have to think about how to route this or where to route this or what plugin I should use on this, that makes your workflow just flow easier. My advice would be learning hotkeys, learning routing, learning signal flow. And once all that foundation is there, then it'll give you room to experiment and more time to try things and, and fail and learn and fail and learn. So, you know, there's nothing specific that I learned um, from these guys other than they're not scared to try things and that they're extremely organized. It's always a battle between balance, you know what I'm saying? Like, life is like mixing, man. You're never done and it's never gonna be perfect, but you get it to where you get it and you move on. Hey guys, we're about to get into this mix. It's called Gone Shine by Still Gold. And I'm gonna run you through how I mixed this song using Isotope products. Let's get into it. What? I have everything organized into VCAs just for organizational purposes. The beat, vox, and effects, music, and drums. That's so I can just solo one thing at a time. And this is my sub mix. So I have all my drums going into this counterpart sub mix or auxes. And then I have all the musical elements going into music and music parallel vocals are all down here show you a bigger view i got it marked verse one hook verse two hook breakdown and an outro i'm going to start this by muting the vocals and we'll focus on the beat first So what I noticed right away was that it's a bass driven record and I wanted to get a little bit more of uh, the low end out of the bass. So I'm gonna take all the plugins off for now, show you guys what I started with. Now that sounds decent just off levels alone, but I'm gonna dive deeper into it. So I'm gonna start with the bass because I feel like the bass is one of the most important components. I usually go bass, kick, the rest of the drums, and I start bringing my musical elements into it. So I got the bass soloed now. I have it routed to my bass subgroup. Got Neutron 3 on there, and everything is turned off. So this is what it sounds like with nothing on it. First thing I'm gonna do is boost a little bit of 40 Hertz, uh, 3 dB. It sounds like this, nothing drastic. And then I hit my sculptor. And what the sculptor does is turn up the low end and turn down everything that it, it thinks that it might not need. So I'm using it super subtly at 18.8. At the more you turn this up, the more drastic the mo movement is. Cool, I like it right there. And then to me, I love I love saturation and this exciter sounds great on bass. I have it at the retro setting and I have it kind of midway up. If you go too crazy with it, start distorting too much and you lose a lot of the, the roundness of the low end. So I got it right at six-ish. Do you like how that sounds? So this is without it. I feel like it gives it more presence and we'll see when everything comes together, how, how it'll sound. But next I have the kick.
And to me, like the relationship between the kick and the bass is, is very, very important. Because if you have a kick that's not prevalent in a mix, then it doesn't drive the song. It takes a lot of emotion out of the song. And for a hip hop like slash rap song, you need the kick in your face. First thing I have is the Neutron EQ. I'm taking some of the low mid thump out and adding a little bit of 60 Hertz. Next thing is the transient shaper. I'm leaving the low end alone because there's so much energy. There's only so much energy you can use down there. So I'm gonna let the bass occupy everything under 100 and I'm gonna give it a little bit of knock by raising the attack. So this is without it. And this is with it. I'm gonna play the same little loop. This is with, this is without. Gives it a lot more presence without, you know, boosting the signal too much. The triple kicks I have here kind of left it alone because it was at a good level relative to the kick in the bass. And then I'm gonna get into the rest of the drums. I like to respect the producer's balance that they send. And for the most part, they send a good blend. So I'm not trying to change the song too much, I'd rather accentuate what they already had because the worst thing is, is for a producer is if they send it to a mix engineer and the mix engineer just completely does their own thing on it. And um, I believe we're all just trying to help each other achieve the goal and, and not try to have our goal supersede the other. For the most part, I kept the blend similar. I boosted the snare a little bit and then um, I boosted the stick, which comes on the two and the one. And right before the four, it gives it a little accent. And if you're on Pro Tools like me, um, it could be kind of a hassle to play with panning. That's when I reach for relay, because you got one knob to go left, right, down, up on your volume and even give it width or less width. So this rattle perk here, it's the per percussion loop. I'm gonna give it its own space. Let's go a little bit to the right where it's not so noticeable, but it's gonna make room for everything else. The ride, conversely, I'm gonna put that to the side, the other side. So now you got, you got it playing with each other instead of against each other. Adding another relay. go backwards. So this is the hi-hat. You see now nobody's clashing with each other. The hi-hat too, I'm gonna give it a tiny bit to the left. Okay, bringing the rest of the drums in. Let's see how it sounds. And you know, with drums, it's hard to get a lot of stereo imaging just because, you know, you're messing with a lot of mono sounds. They might look stereo, but, you know, there's not a lot of stereo information in them. So by panning them, you know, a tiny bit to the left, right, it gives it, it gives the audience something to listen for. You know, it's like ear candy. This here kind of just left the same. They're just little shots. I like to blend it out already. So now I have all my drums together.
See, we have the bass nice and present, but it's not overwhelming anything. And the kick is kind of almost accenting the bass instead of fighting against it. And uh, I, li I like that balance I have here. So we're gonna move on to the musical elements. The first thing I got is this wind bell, which is the main musical element of the song. What I like to do, not all the time, but if the music can use some, some stereo imaging, I'll make a parallel of the music sub and I'll add uh, an Ozone Pro on there. I have a little bit of vintage tape to give it almost like a distorted sound, super saturated sound. So this is what it sounds like. I'm gonna boost the volume just for this. Very crunchy sounding. Lower that. And then an imager to give it some width. This is without it. This is with it. And then I have the maximizer, which is just gonna, you know, smash it down. It's barely doing anything, but then on the loud parts, it's gonna clamp down some of the higher frequencies. This is without it. This brings up the overall volume. Blend that with the music sub, and then this is what you get. Without the parallel, it's kind of dull. It doesn't have a lot of uh, stereo information. This kind of gives it a little bit of life, you know? All right, next musical element is bells. It's almost like an octave up of the wind bells. It gives it more energy when it comes in. Leave it as it is. Just play with the volume. Uh, I had it come up a little bit. Oh, I forgot to mention on the wind bells. I did a little bit of EQing. Turn down this frequency here. Which was clashing with the, the 808 and the, the kick. And later on, the vocals. I did it after listening to the vocals. And I turned up some of the high. Anytime an instrument sounds good already, but I want to turn down a part of it or a certain range of it, I'll, you know, make a little bit of a cut and then give a boost somewhere else, you know? So I'll, I'll listen to where it might need it in the grand scheme of things. And then I'll uh, boost as much as I cut. Next thing on the list is the bells. Um, you heard that. And then uh, the main synth. So this gives it a completely different emotion. This is like a sinister moment right before the hook comes in to, I guess, give the song like some grit and, and some, some emotion, the darker tones. See, till here it's super mellow. And then after this break, To me, this is when you start mixing with feel. Uh, it's more so than, than a certain level I'm trying to reach or, or, or trying to hear it clearly. I'm looking for a feeling. And if this was any lower, you don't quite get that impact. I just keep turning it up until I find a sweet spot.
without interfering with the main elements too much. Next thing we got are these vocal stabs. They go out throughout the whole song. And this is more of like a topping. This is sauce on top of the, the ice cream cone, you know? So there's no real rule to how, how loud these vocal sprinkles are going to be. But to me, um, I like them a little bit on the louder side. Because every time they do come in, you know, your ears will perk up. Next thing is a piano. And the piano comes down on the breakdown section of the song. Where most of the, the mu other musical elements are out. So I'm going to match up kind of the level I have here. Of the wind bells and the main synth. And apply it to the piano. So you see I have it at minus 12. If I had it at, you know, the same level as these guys, it would be a little bit too loud. You see? So I'm just going to leave it at 12. Sometimes, you know, uh, from the producer, we'll get effects channels, which are reverbs and delays that they apply to the elements of the song. And in this case, it's a plate and a room reverb. All I'm trying to do here is not muddy up the mix with those. Try to keep the in integrity of the song that they sent me, but not muddy up the song so much where I feel like those are the things that are going to take over. Because mind you, we still have reverb and delay from the vocals that we need to make room for. Here we go. Next couple things there. Are, these are more effects, uh, swells. We got these DJ cuts going on through the whole song. You know, when they when they sent it initially, it was a little bit loud, but I think they were clashing with the vocals a little bit, so I turned them down. And any of the swells, I'm I'm listening for you know just just emotion. The swell should should get you ready for a part of a song and and they shouldn't stand out too much. Such as there, we got a synth swell here. I think they're, they're at a pretty good level right now. There's an interesting part of this song where they added this water effect and later on when i play the whole song you'll see that they're talking about uh referencing drowning so they wanted to kind of uh make, make a real life metaphor out of it what i did was i created these filters on all the subgroups so we got bass drums music and then the kick also as you can see, that's when it's going to activate. So I put a high filter or low pass filter on them so that it'll simulate the 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 feeling of being underwater. And then here I have it ramping back up the whole beat in general have it cut here and then ramping back up I think every song should have dynamics and anytime I feel like I can add that to the song I'm just gonna try it because the worst thing the artist will say is that they don't like it and we can revert back you know like there's no pride involved in it um, I don't need to make my mark but if I find something that can make the song better I'm gonna at least try it Cool. So now we got the beat kind of where we want it. I'm going to add a limiter on the beat track or on the beat sub, sorry. Like I'm underneath the boat. Like I'm underneath the boat. So 
but this was before no this is just bringing up the volume i'm compressing probably two to three db at the top and i'm using this limiter more like a glue so that there's a more uniform sound throughout and nothing gets lost in the mix This is where you got to be careful um, not to do too much because the more you compress here, the more definition you lose on all your transients, such as your snares and, and your kick drum. You know, use your ears, get to about 2 to 3 dB, and try going more, try going less. Whatever you hear, whatever sweet spot you find, Stay there. So I'm going to start introducing the vocals now. This is the main lead. The artist is Mo. I've been clutching on the I'm going to take all the stuff I put on there off. I've been clutching on the forty dollars. My baby screaming now the deck collected China Hall. Just the lead Most right here. Started dreaming of him palace where we bought tomorrow kinda of mine and my own business, but drama follow no matter what I do. If you notice, you know the recording is nice. There's no distortion, there's no hot peaks. Compression going in was really good. I've been clutching you know I, what i like to do is i like to go in here and make sure certain breaths are lower than others especially if they distract since i use compression on vocals what it can do is bring up these these quiet elements so i try to tuck them before i compress i have nectar on these vocals i love how easy nectar is to use you know it has a pitch corrector built in if you choose to use it EQ sounds great. The de-esser I love, especially because it has a mix knob. A lot of times with de-essers, it's either not working enough or working too much and there's no medium happy ground. When you have a mix knob on there, you can, you can blend how much dry signal you want with the process signal. You can go kind of crazy on the threshold and then turn down the mix a little bit and still sound natural. First things uh, first, the, the EQ. I've been clutching on I found a little bit of the low mids can use some tucking. It seemed a little bit too present. So I dropped 1600 Hertz around one dB and 500 Hertz at one dB. And I, I'm controlling some of the sibilance before it gets to the, the de-esser right here at 900 or 9,000 Hertz at 1.5 dB. Of course, I got the rumble cutting at 112. The first EQ, I really just like to subtract the EQ because you can always add later, but everything that's already in the first EQ is gonna be amplified if you go to a compressor. Next thing I have is a de-esser. I've been clutching on. Same theory, you know, if you have um, a lot of sibilance before a compressor and you turn everything up, then the sibilance is going to become more apparent. So I like to tame all my, you know, unwanted frequencies before going into any compression. I've been clutching on the $40. My baby screaming, now the debt collector trying to holler. So I moved the frequency selector to like 5.5 hertz around there. I've been clutching on the 40 And you can listen to what you're doing. You know, if you're doing too much and you start catching like consonants or vowels that you don't want to get, you know, turn it till you only get the S's and T's and C's and then play with the threshold. I've been clutching on the $40. My baby screaming, now the debt collector trying to holler. Bus rider dreaming of impalas where we bought tomorrow kind of my... You see, right here, I'm going a little bit overboard, but you can always I've been come down on, on the mix. The I'm going to exaggerate the de just to show you the power of that. I've been clutching on the $40. My baby screaming, now the debt collector trying to holler. Bus rider dreaming of impalas where we... You see how now it's starting to pump a little bit. 
If you turn on the mix knob. I've been clutching on the forty dollars. My baby screaming now the debt collector trying to holler. Bus rider dream. You get best of both worlds. I've been clutching on the. I'm gonna turn this back up a little bit. I've been clutching on the forty. Okay, let's get thirteen dB and then turn it to like maybe seventy percent mix. I've been clutching on the forty dollars. My baby screaming now the debt collector trying to holler. And play it with the rest of the beat. I've been clutching on the forty dollars. My baby screaming now the debt collector trying to holler. Bus rider dreaming of impalas. Worry about tomorrow, kind of mind and my own business. I'm a follow no matter what I do, do this is survival. My Before I do anything further, I'm gonna uh mute my vocal and effects parallel chain. I've been clutching on the forty dollars, my baby screaming now the deck collected China holler. Bus rider dreaming of him pilots where we bought to my And I try to get my vocal sounding good before we we add any you know reverb or delay because I find it that the reverb and delay sometimes mask the problems that we have with the vocals. So I'm just going to get it as, as clean as possible before doing any additional processing. The last thing on my chain is a, a compressor on Nectar. I've been clutching on the 40 and I have it on the digital setting, which is the default. 2.5 ratio, medium attack, slow release and the makeup is at zero. This is a function that automatically adjusts your, your gain to how much you compress. I've been clutching on the forty dollars. My baby screaming now the deck collected China holler. Bus rider dreaming of him pilots worry about tomorrow. Kind of mind and my own business with drama follow. No matter what I do, do this is survival. My I think I'm doing a little too much, so I'm gonna back off. I've been clutching on the forty dollars. My baby screaming now the deck collected China holler. Bus rider dreaming of him pilots worry about tomorrow. Kind of mind. If the vocals were recorded uh, without compression, or if this was all over the place, I might compress it a little bit more. But since we have a really good, nice level coming in, I'm only looking to attenuate like three to five dB. I've been clutching on the forty dollars. My baby screaming now the debt collector trying to holler. Bus rider dreaming of him pilots worry about tomorrow. Kind of mind and my own business, but drama follow. No so this is before the processing. That's after. This is a point where I'm going to introduce some reverb. And I have my reverb bus down here. Boom. And I'm using the neo verb. I kept it pretty stock except um, a little bit more space on the reflections. Plate time I'm going to turn up a little bit. And then the, the hall time I turned up a little bit. Just turn this down. On the reverb EQ, I'm going to turn off or turn down the highs and some of the lows. I've been clutching on the 40 and if you scroll while you're on these icons, they change the cue. They change the bandwidth. I've been clutching on the 40 dollars. My baby screaming now the debt collector trying to holler. Bus rider dreaming of him pilots worry. All right, I'm gonna show you guys what it sounds like with too much of it. I've been clutching on the forty dollars. My baby screaming now the debt collector. And then I'm gonna turn it down to the appropriate level. I've been clutching on the forty dollars. My baby screaming now the debt collector trying to holler. Bus rider dreaming of him pilots worry about tomorrow. Kind of mind and my own. And conversely, you can go from zero or all the way down to the appropriate level. I've been clutching on the forty dollars. My baby screaming now the debt collector trying to holler. Bus rider dreaming of him pilots worry about tomorrow kind of mind and I personally like to go from zero and then down just because you know what the reverb sounds like where if you go from negative infinity and come up you can almost trick yourself into hearing things that aren't actually there when something's too loud and you're turning it down I feel like you know what it is and, and what it's supposed to be rather than is it do I hear it? And then turning it up and then not being what you thought it was. I've been clutching on the forty dollars. My baby screaming now the debt collector trying to holler. Bus rider dreaming of him pilots worry about tomorrow. Kind of mind and my own business, but drama follow. No matter what I do, do 
This is survival, my dude. As far as my ad libs, I have it running through a similar chain. EQ doing something similar. I think I boosted a little bit at 2.7 to 3K. DSR pretty much the same. Compression is the same. And then I have added reverb on this channel just to give it more space in the back. Dallas. 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 My baby screaming now the deck collected China holla. Bus rider. So I like to add reverb on my ad libs in my backgrounds just because that pushes it further back in the mix and it doesn't let it fight with the main vocals. I've been clutching on the forty dollars. My baby screaming now the deck collected China holla. Bus rider dreaming of impalas where we bought tomorrow kinda mine and my own business, but drama follow no matter what I do, do this is survival. Now I have the dubs completely dry and they're going into the same subgroup as the lead vocals and the ad libs. Sometimes if, if the ad libs are, are really crazy and the and the dubs are doing harmonies and such, I might put it put it into a different subgroup just so that they all have their own space. But for this song, I put them all into the same subgroup. It's really just an accent, you know? I've been clutching on the forty dollars. My baby screaming. It might be a little bit low. We'll turn them up to minus twelve ish. I've been clutching on the forty dollars. My baby screaming. Now the deck collected. China holla. holla. Bus rider dreaming of impalas. Where we bought tomorrow. Kinda mine and my own. Bitch. It all depends on how you want to mix them and how the artist wants the doubles. Sometimes the artist wants the doubles as loud as the lead. And sometimes they want them tucked so they can barely hear it, but they can feel. I've been clutching on the forty dollars. My baby screaming now the deck collected China holla. I think that's a cool level to have them at. Let's hear it with the rest of the song. I've been clutching on the forty dollars. My baby screaming now the deck collected China holla. Bus rider dreaming of impalas. Worry about tomorrow, kind of mind and my own business, but drama follow. No matter what I do, do. This is where I'm going to throw on the delay. I have the delay coming through uh, instance of Nectar and I have that bust out separately. So I have full control of it. And um, this delay in particular is a quarter note. And everything else is pretty much flat. I've been clutching on the $40. My this is uh, exaggerated. I've been clutching on the $40. My baby screaming now. I ended up having it at like 20. I've been clutching on the 40 dollars. My baby screaming now the deck collected China holla. Bus rider dreaming of impalas. Worry about tomorrow kind of mind and my own business. For me personally, I find that adding a delay gives you almost a second listen to what the vocals were saying. So like, let's say um, in rap vocals, you, you might miss a line, but then the delay subconsciously will let you register it a second after it's set. I don't know, it, it works for me. <laughs> I find the delays are, are very important for that reason and uh, I'm sticking by it. At this point, we're gonna throw on another instance of Nectar for the de -esser. So this is post compression de -essing. Now that we have everything kind of hot, I wanna control some of the, the sibilance again. I've been clutching on the forty dollars. My baby screaming now the deck collected China holla. Bus rider dreaming of impalas. Worry about tomorrow kind of. So you see, this one isn't doing as much. You know, the other one was going to minus ten dB of a uh, of attenuation. This one is maybe doing three to five. I've been clutching on the four. And then this is the perfect time to bring in my uh, vocals and effects parallel. First thing is uh, the Neutron. I'm cutting off all lows, cutting off all highs, because I really just want this to thicken up the vocals. So I got the Equalizer cutting off the highs and lows. And then I got the Exciter on tape at six. So if you hear it by itself, I've been clutching on the forty dollars. My baby screaming now the deck collected. You get this um, distorted, almost like ampy sounding vocal. 
To add to that, I have the Vintage Limiter by Ozone. And on the analog setting, I'm just completely smashing it. I've been clutching on the forty dollars. My baby screaming now that they collected China Hollow. Let's try to dreaming of impalis where we bought some. There's definitely distortion in there, but I feel like that's um that can be used artfully. As long as it's not in the forefront. And I think I had it at like twenty something twenty three dB or thirty three dB. If you hear this by itself. Super quiet. But it's gonna give the main vocals a little bit more body. So this is the vocal, the main vocals with the parallel. I've been clutching on the forty dollars. My baby screaming now. This is without. I've been clutching on the forty dollars. My baby screaming now the debt collector trying to holler. Let's ride a dreaming of impalis where we bought. You see how it does add some thickness to it. I've been clutching on the forty dollars. My baby screaming now the debt collector. And if this is too much body, of course you can back off it. You might not even need something like that. I've been if you're looking for really crispy vocals, the parallel bus isn't even necessary. On the hook, we have a lot of vocal stacks. The way I went about doing this is I feel like, you know, as long as you're organized, it's not so daunting. You know, sometimes I get sessions that have like 150 tracks and like 80 vocals. First thing I do is panic. I'm thinking about if I should say no or not. Or if I, should, if I should just give them a refund, whatever. Cause it's, <laughs> it's scary, you know? Like you don't know what's involved in it. You don't know what tracks are what yet. But once you get all the organization done, you realize that it's the same as any other session. You got harmonies, you got doubles, you got ad libs. And once you categorize those, it's so much easier to function, you know? Especially if you're getting it from an artist that, that already has like their vocals kind of on lock you get levels that are good already. So it's not like you have to go to every single um, track and process it and EQ it and do this and do that. No, like I just group them together and I process them all together. And luckily this session was well recorded and organized. So I was able to go listen to it, determine if it needed, you know, individual processing or if I could just do it in a group and uh, I got lucky. I'm gonna shine, she gonna shine, he gonna shine, we gonna shine. So without the nectar, I'm gonna shine, she gonna shine, he gonna shine, we gonna shine. I'm gonna play it. I'm gonna shine, she gonna shine, he gonna shine, we gonna shine, they gonna shine, all star. So super dry. I felt like this needed to be like in the forefront because. There are other elements of the vocals, but they're kind of singing their background noise. There was no main part of it, so this had to assume the role. I'm gonna shine. I'm gonna turn everything off and go one by one. It's similar process, you know. EQ, I'm taking off a little bit more of the lows because now you got three tracks that are competing for that low end information or that that space. So I'm going to turn down some of the lows of the vocals at 250 because I find that that's where they all kind of gather up. I'm going to shine. He's going to shine. He's going to shine. We're going to shine. See, that's already sounds, it already sounds muddy without the rest of the song in there. I'm going to shine. He's going to shine. He's going to shine. We're going to shine. They're going to shine. All star. That allows, you know, the other vocals to have, share, share that you know, frequency range. So I have 250 cut, about 3 dB. I also have 430 cut. That's another uh, clashing region for me. And then I have a bell 1 dB at 3K. That's gonna give it a little bit of crispiness. And then same thing I did with the lead vocal. I'm doing de-essing, compressing, adding reverb, cutting off the highs and the lows because, you know, there's a lot of information down there already. I'm gonna shine, he gonna shine, he gonna shine, we And I'm adding delay just to sauce it up. I'm gonna shine, he gonna shine, he gonna shine, we gonna shine, they gonna shine, all star. I'm gonna shine, he gonna shine, he gonna shine, he gonna shine, we gonna shine, they gonna shine, all star.
feel like I can take some of the highs off the delay. I'm gonna shine, D gonna shine, D gonna shine, B gonna shine, they gonna shine, all star. I'm gonna shine. These are cuts. I'm gonna shine, D gonna shine, D gonna shine, we gonna shine, they gonna shine. What I did with this was I automated relay to go left and right. I'm gonna shine, D gonna shine. And it's easy to do this with, you know, there's plugins that, that have auto panning and stuff, but I like the control I get from this, you know. I'm not a huge fan of automation, but when I do it, uh, I do it because I need the individual control. So if I want one of these guys to go completely left or completely right, I'm able to do that. So as you notice, like the first stutter is gonna be straight down the middle. I'm gonna shine, D gonna shine, D gonna shine, we gonna shine, they gonna shine, I'll start. I'm gonna shine. And that way I have control of exactly what I'm doing. I'm gonna shine, D gonna shine, D gonna shine. All right, the next group of layers. See, these already sounded good to me before I put anything on them. What I'm looking for here is um, if there's any really big breaths or mouth noises that stand out because when you combine them with the other tracks, like they, they can, you know, get really loud. Uh, and unfortunately, again, there was none of that involved. So I'm going straight into Nectar. On this EQ, I'm cutting off a little bit more of the lows and then a big chunk of the sibilance and then adding some air on top at 20K. I got the compressor doing just a little bit, you know, just kissing it at 2, 3 dB. And then the reverb, you know, this has to sound like almost like an army of angels to me. I have a higher reverb setting, longer decay. I'm just going to go like three. Big, all the way wide and then add, adding some saturation. The delay also I have a quarter note and then everything else is pretty stock on there. In relations to the main I'm gonna shine. vocal, gonna shine. I felt like everything was kind of so central that it was muddying up the vocals in in the mix. So I added a imager on the subgroup for the angelic vocals. Here, I'll let you hear before. Super nice and central. Even with the pans, it, it, it gathers up in the middle. I wanted to find a way to kind of put them to the side. See how that really brightens up the sides. It complements well with the lead. I'm going to shine. D going to shine. D going to shine. We going to shine. They gonna shine. I'll start. I'm gonna shine. This is without the imager. I'm gonna shine. D gonna shine. D gonna shine. We gonna shine. It almost sounds like the angelic choir is behind the lead vocal instead of like right beside him. And with the ozone imager, I was able to accomplish that where it sounds like, you know, they're in the line, the leads are right in the middle, and then the choirs, um, choir members are on the sides. I'm gonna shine, D gonna shine, D gonna shine, we gonna shine, they gonna shine, I'll start. This is with everything together. I'm gonna shine, D gonna shine, D gonna shine, we gonna shine. We can almost give them a little bit more. So I'm turning it up to 2 dB. I'm gonna shine. D gonna shine. D gonna shine. D gonna shine. D gonna shine. All star. I'm gonna shine. D gonna shine. C gonna shine. We gonna shine. D gonna shine. All star. I'm gonna shine. D gonna shine. C gonna shine. We gonna shine. D gonna shine. I'm gonna shine. I got the, you know, I got the inspiration for the the angelic choirs from the bells, you know. 
that almost they almost sound like church bells and and when i heard them together i felt like i needed to deliver a picture or a moment in time where like someone might close their eyes and they picture themselves in church where there's like a hundred angels singing not the speakers so i'm going to skip over the second verse just because it's it's another rap verse and we already covered that first one i process it very similarly except i didn't bust out the reverbs i put the reverbs on the actual track here and a delay but i'm gonna skip over to the part that i think is kind of the coolest um part of the song it happens after the second hook crazy how the same vocals that were in the hook in a different you know arrangement sound completely different that's the versatility of music i guess you know you can take the same exact notes the same element but put it in a different section and it becomes a completely different feeling you know this part of the song is kind of spooky and and right off the top when i heard the vocals I'm like okay this is this is a spooky vibe So on top of the spooky, I wanted to make it spookier. If, if something's already there, it's easy to, uh, you know, accent it. So I threw the nectar on there. EQ, kind of similar, taking out the lows, adding some of the mids, compressing a lot this time, just because there's so many subtle moments. I want everything kind of, you know, even. The cool thing I did on this vocal or this section is I added these harmonies. Without the harmonies, it just sounds like this. Especially on this section, hold on. Very straight up. But using this harmony plugin in Nectar, I added a unison double on the left and a unison double on the right. I detuned one positive five cents and minus five cents on the other. So I'm gonna let y'all hear that. So it's almost acting like a doubler where it sounds like now there's three of them instead of one. So this is without. This is with. And to e make it even more spooky, I added a fifth to the left and then the fifth up to the right. So we're going a fifth here and a minus five on the left. It sounds crazy, right? So this is without it. And then to kind of tie everything in together, I didn't know what I wanted to do with the Dimension plugin, but I threw it on there anyway, and I uh, messed with a couple settings and I found something I liked. I got the Flanger setting at like a one to one rate. This is with it all the way up. It's just flanging a little bit, and then I got it tucked to like 10 or so. It's just a texture thing. Similarly with the reverb, you know, on this section, it's it's not so important what she's saying, but the feeling that she's addressing. So I gave it a lot of reverb because I knew that there's no drums. The piano was the only other instrument there. So 
So on this one, I have a little more pre-delay, 40 at 40 milliseconds. You know, you could crank this up to like four. A little bit of reverb never hurt nobody. Width all the way up, a little bit of saturation. That's the chain for the, the spooky vocals. I'm gonna let you hear it one more time without anything on it. Let's go to this part. Okay, this is wet. All together. Now you got them, you know, complementing each other and one isn't missed, you know? You still feel the, the spooky vocals in the background. You still hear all the shines. I feel like it's, it's a great blend, you know? This section of the song really, really makes this song to me because most of the beat is just a loop. And then you got this breakdown where completely strips all the sounds. You got just the snare and the piano playing. And then you got these different textures with the, the vocals going. I love this part of the song and I couldn't wait to get to it. Yeah, let me play it without anything on it just so you can hear it. Right, it's not the same feeling, right? It's crazy because I don't even remember what the main song sounds like. So I'm going to play it from top to bottom for you guys. I've been clutching on the forty dollars. My baby screaming now the debt collector trying to holler. Bus rider dreaming of him. Worry about tomorrow, kind of mind and my own business But drama follow, no matter what I do, do This is survival, my dude If I play nice, I'm gonna lose I will survive as I choose Lately, there's nothing that's cool I just like reciting lyrics that can knock a tooth loose Mighty healthy, about to eat the beats like they was couscous Feeling like I am the strange food Struggling to get the noose loose It's the truth and life is so cold, cold Trying to find a meaning of life, but you've been distracted by the go, go, go. Tell these niggas I don't need a beat. I'm finna bend my head and rock a road, road, road. Stop and take a second piece of eyes upon a pretty brother called Mobo. All these haters, all these haters looking at me, but I'm finding my quotes all in their throat. Floating like I'm underneath the boat. I'm underneath the boat. I'm in the chains, I'm losing hope. Losing hope. I'm trying to find a silver lining, though. Lining, though. I'm telling motherfuckers everything. I've been saying shit that they don't wanna know. Wanna know. This ain't my first rodeo. Look at my portfolio. I've been flowing for a long time. time. I've been dope a long time. Force is 
gold chain, leaf full of propane, my feet running through brains, thoughts running through minds, I'm losing my own time to time, I came from the mud but I shine, pour a cup, roll some butter, recline, it's AB soaring next in line, make you put it in rewind, put a tingle in your spine, phone ringing for the dimes, trouble fall aboard, just chase the money, you'll be fine, I'm observing all the lies, tell you what it is, it's something you don't wanna know, lyrics cutting at your throat, it's just me and still gold mode, let them know, I'm just blowing through the smoke, elevate your mind, trying to see where it can go, I don't leave my feet though, ten toes down, gotta stay in peace mode, I don't get no sleep bro, sleeping on me, see me in your dreams woke, boy you know the streets cold, Italy your heart froze, keep the heat close, all star team flow, I need a trophy for this, <laughs> ain't nothing doper than this, I need a chauffeur for this, to ride around the city and tell them to turn this shit all the way up in the whip, I be burning it up in this bitch, it's a beautiful view through this tent, I smoke two and maneuver, I don't need a shooter cause bullets is all that I spit, I promise that all of them hit, I pray to while I repent, I go to most of the shit, ain't nothing harder than this, my nigga I'm starving for this, from the bottom we started this shit, I'm gon' shine, D gon' shine, he gon' shine, we gon' shine, they gon' shine, all star, I'm gon' shine, he gon' shine, she gon' shine, we gon' shine, they gon' shine, all star, I'm gon' shine, he gon' shine, she gon' shine, we gon' shine, they gon' shine, I'm gon' shine, he gon' shine, she gon' shine, we gon' shine, they gon' shine, all star. Cool, and uh, one last thing. I'm on my master chain. I have ozone, bringing it up to volume. Equalizer's not doing nothing. I don't know why I have it there. I've been clutching on the the maximizer is uh, compressing like four to five dB. I kind of just play it by ear. And then I have the algorithm on classic. If you switch it to modern, it might have a little bit more of the low end and it kind of dampens like the high end a little bit, but the classic is kind of like the flat setting. So I like to keep it there. I've been clutching on the $40, my baby screaming. Uh, I like to go to the loudest part of the song, which was when all the instruments are in before the hook. This is where I would do some referencing. I would have like iTunes up or, or Apple Music up and I would listen to some of the songs out there that I like the volume of and then come back to Pro Tools and kind of adjust as I go. And then for those without a super, you know, uh, treated room, this plugin tonal balance control is a lifesaver. It's like, if I ever need to go to a different studio that I'm not familiar with, I'll throw this guy on. Even if I'm in my room, you know, sometimes you get ear fatigue and, and you're not hearing certain frequencies like you should on fresh ears. This will give you a good indication of where you're at. Second, second piece of eyes upon a pretty brother, come more, bro. All these haters, all these haters looking 
can knock me but I'm finding my quotes all in their throat floating like I'm underneath no, so you you're trying to stay within this green area anytime I have like an 808 that's too booming I'll take it to the car and then sure enough like it'll be like it'll be above the green area insight is a great metering plugin it'll give you your luffs it'll give you like your rms it'll give you sound field spectrum and then you can also like turn on the spectrogram if you need to listen to it give you a little history of what you've done and stuff there you have it guys um that's how i mix go and shine using isotope plugins and uh until next time i'm david kim i'll catch y'all later peace